Hello everybody, uh, Seth Mayo here. I am the Curator of Astronomy at the Lohman Planetarium here at the Museum of Arts and Sciences. And I'm here with you now doing a remote version of our live Sky Tonight Planetarium show. Something we usually do every day where we teach people about the night sky and what you can see on that very night. But we're doing a remote version of it since uh, a lot of people are doing their own uh, self-quarantine um, and maybe have a little more time at home, need something to do, you can't make it to the museum. Well, this is the next best thing. I can show you this guy, show you what to expect, and uh, you know, maybe you'll have some time with your family to go outside and look up. There's always something really interesting to see and to wonder about, and that's what we'll try to do here um, and just update you on things. Um, and this is a program that's called Stellarium. It's actually totally free. You can kind of fly around. It's a three-dimensional program you can put on your computer. Uh, and you can download it, look at the sky from any place on Earth, any time. And I use it all the time to figure out what's going to be in the sky, to plan for various things for our events, our night sky events. So this is a very, very uh, useful tool, really easy to use. And there are versions for your phone as well um, that you can download um, to learn the sky. So as you see, I'm kind of flying around. It's a three-dimensional program. It's just some random field here. But we have it set to uh, the coordinates here at Daytona Beach, here at the museum. Of course, on planet Earth, you see down at the bottom here, I set the label to MOAS and Earth here. And this is the current time of the day. Uh, right now, it's set to uh, March 16th, Monday, 2020. And uh, I can kind of show you what the sky will look like tonight. And this is actually what things will look like, for the most part, through the week as well. So even if you're not looking at this on Monday the 16th, this will work uh, through any day this week for the most part. Uh, and uh, you can go out and maybe find these things and uh, hopefully, uh, again, learn about the universe on your own. And that's the best part is to go out and find these things on your own. So uh, without further ado, we can get this going here. So again, as we've been looking here, you can see we're kind of flying around, three-dimensional program. You can see, of course, the sun. You see my mouse here. Trying to move too fast. You know, we're usually in the planetarium and I'm flying around, so this works a little differently, and I'll try to keep it nice and calm. But you can see the horizon here. Things are warped a little funny in this, but you can see there's the horizon, there's the ground, of course, there's the sky if it was a perfectly clear day. And you got the directions here. There's the west on that side. You're gonna see the east. You see my mouse here, right here, where the sun rises from in the morning. Of course, west where the sun sets, and then north would be all the way behind you here. And the great thing about Solarium is I can turn things on and off. I can change the time however I want, and so it's very flexible. So let's just take a look at a few things. We won't spend too much time on this, but a few of the highlights of what we can see in the sky right now. So we're going to speed up time. Just a couple clicks of the button here. You can use your keyboard, or I can even actually use some buttons down here at the bottom to speed up time. You can see the time going real fast. There it goes as you go through the rest of the day and afternoon and then into sunset where the sun will set in the west as you see here so we'll make that happen nice lovely sunset now if you've been paying attention to the sky at least the last couple months you're probably noticing what looks like a kind of like a bright star in the western part of the sky you notice it kind of coming into view right up here there it is that's kind of bright looking thing that is not a star. It's something that will look like a, a star, but it's not twinkling like a star. It has a very steady glow. And that happens to be the planet Venus. And so Venus has been absolutely phenomenal in the West. It's kind of a good year for Venus here in 2020. And you can see it kind of shining here. And that's one of the first things you'd see. Even before it's totally dark out, Venus starts appearing in the sky. So I get a lot of questions about when Venus is out. And sometimes we call it the evening star. Or the morning star depends on when you can see it. Sometimes you can see it in the morning, sometimes in the evening, and it looks like the brightest star, even though it's a planet. And we can double check our work here. We can actually click on this, and if you can see this in the top left, it might be a little hard to see, but it says Venus up here, and all a whole bunch of other tidbits and information. Probably too much information that we need to know right here, but kind of fun to kind of figure out what's going on with all this that it's, it labels here. But anyway, so we got Venus, so we're correct on that one. A little uh, designator here so you can see what I've clicked on and as you may already know it's second planet from the Sun and the brightest planet in the sky so nothing else is brighter than Venus naturally except for the moon and uh, the Sun right of course those things are really bright but Venus is third to those least natural objects in the sky the International Space Station actually gets brighter but 
uh, for natural objects, Venus is really, really bright. Uh, and being the second planet from the sun, it's a little closer to the sun, so it's hotter and it has a very thick atmosphere. We can actually zoom in a little bit with this program. That's what's so cool about Solarium is we can actually kind of fly around a little bit, zoom in, here you go. And uh, it's not the most detailed picture of Venus, but that's okay. But Venus goes through phases like the moon does. So it's about a half lit Venus. Uh, so that's kind of neat. You wouldn't normally see that unless you could see it through a telescope. Uh, and Venus is a very thick layer of clouds, traps the heat, super hot. It gets up to 900 degrees on the surface of Venus. So very scary, kind of crazy environment. But one of the beautiful, most beautiful in the sky, and very reflective. See all that atmosphere there that I'm kind of showing with my mouse here? That has a very high, what we call albedo, which reflects the light from the sun back to us and makes it uh, a very, very bright, bright object in the sky. So Venus is one of my favorite things to see. Really noticeable, even with uh, places that have light pollution, even a thin layer of clouds, Venus still uh, shows up and is really bright. And again, it's gonna look like a star that doesn't twinkle. So that's one of the first things you'll see, especially in the West. But of course, as the night goes on, as we get into now sunsets after seven o'clock now, uh, we went through daylight saving time. Now, uh, really by about 8 o'clock, you expect it to get dark out. And this is now already set to eight, almost 8.30. Okay, and by then, Venus will still be in the sky. And if you look down here, it says 20.28. So that would be um, uh, 8.30, right? Uh, A.M. P.M. kind of time there. So 8.30 P.M. or close to it. And by then, Venus is out. It's getting pretty dark out. And if you look kind of in the south southwest, but still really high in the sky, and if I zoom out, you'll see it's still pretty high up if you compare the, this to the whole sky. You have some really bright wintertime stars. And we talk a lot about this in the Loman Planetarium. Uh, we really focus a lot in this area here. Without getting too deep into it, you'll notice these three stars in a row. Many people know that as Orion's belt. There's Orion's shoulders, legs, and feet. And if I do this correctly here, actually, we'll click on this star. I will outline it and we can actually outline the constellation we call Orion the Hunter. So that's Orion, uh, one of the most famous constellations in our sky. He was a hunter, so he's holding a club above his head and maybe a shield or a bow or an animal pelt since he hunted animals. Um, and his belt really stands out, so I like looking for him. And uh, Orion's belt, as many of you may already know, points to the brightest star Sirius. So you can see that. I'll click on it. It'll say Sirius. Sirius is by far the brightest star in the night sky. One of the closer stars to us, about eight, a little more than eight light years away. So the light takes uh, more than eight years. Actually, it looks like here it says distance 8.60 light years. Is this correct here? So more than eight and a half light years away. So the light takes uh, eight and a half plus years to travel from this star to reach your eyes here on Earth. And that's considered close, even though light still takes years to travel from it. So that is a very bright star. Some people like to say that's the jewel of the collar of Orion's dog. That's what I clicked on right here. This is called Canis Major. It's supposed to be one of Orion's hunting dogs. And actually above here, we have a small dog. And we always have a joke saying about how we have no idea how people saw a dog from two stars here. The little line here, that's supposed to be a small dog in the sky. So these three constellations all kind of go together in the sky and in Greek mythology. They sort of uh, are part of the same story since Orion had these two dogs. We can put up their pictures and show them to you a little bit better. And so now you can kind of see how they uh, sort of uh, relate to each other and some of the uh, imagination that was infused into the constellations. We can kind of overlay pictures onto them to really see them. So Solarium does a good job of doing that, just like we have in the Loman Planetarium when we put up our pictures as well. So they're still pretty high up. You still have a lot of time to see them. Um, and just a few more things we'll look at here. If you look in front of, of Orion, you see the V-shaped group of stars right here. And that V is the nose of something called Taurus the bull. So you see this bull shape. I don't know if that looks like a bull to you. These things take a lot of imagination, we always say. Um, but this is like the nose or the face or, of the bull. Here are the horns here. This is some, sometimes we say this is the eye. One of the eyes of Taurus is a star, call, star called Aldebaran, kind of an orange reddish star. You can see that, a little bit of a color there. And then on the back of the bowl, a lot of folks recognize this thing. It looks like, maybe I don't even need to click on it, I can just kind of zoom into it. 
it looks like the Little Dipper, actually. It's a very common um, thing that people think is that it looks like the uh, Little Dipper, but it's actually a group of stars called Pleiades, or the Seven Sisters, uh, a group of stars that um, are clustered together. There's actually hundreds of stars there, but we can only see a collection of them from Earth with your naked eyes. And there are a lot of hot blue stars. And uh, these uh, seven sisters were supposed to be the daughters of Atlas. He was the titan from Greek mythology who held Earth on his shoulders. He had seven daughters, and the stars represent um, them. This is also in Japan called Subaru, just like the car company. And if you ever look on a Subaru car, in the logo of the car, you find a picture of that, uh, Subaru. Uh, so Subaru, Pleiades, Seven Sisters, uh, along the back of Taurus the Bull. Um, and I've actually just turned on all the constellations here. You can see all of them at once. And there are many of them, right? So that was Taurus. Here's Orion again in the sky. There's the brightest star Sirius that Orion's belt, uh, his belt points to. And then um, the small dog there. And so those are some of the main stars that you can see tonight, especially around the 8.30 time frame, not too late. And Venus is still here in the sky, so you can still see it right there in the west. And so this all is very high up, but more towards the southwestern part of the sky. And something we, we always do in the big planetarium is we like to put up all the constellations. And that's kind of fun in the software is you can look at all of them and see the kind of imagination that people put into the stars. And they're all sort of different ones really sometimes makes you scratch your head and wonder how people imagined these various pictures and characters and things. Um, but it's kind of fun to go out and sort of look for them. But my recommendation, I say this in all our shows, is always go and look for the brightest stars first and then go from there. So anyway, so those are some of the nicest uh, things you can at least see tonight, this time of year. Now we're still in wintertime, getting closer to spring, um, but a lot of wintertime objects are still visible. And uh, again, this is something we hope to do more often is do these updates of the sky remotely. If you can't make it to the museum for various reasons, um, then this is kind of the next best thing. And I hope it inspires you to go out and uh, do some observing on your own. And uh, if you want any more information about what we're doing and these type of events, um, you can check out our Facebook page. Um, but also you can check uh, our website as well, and we'll try to update you all as best we can on what's going on here, what we're planning, and some of these um, live uh, events or recorded events that we'll do right from the museum uh, to provide you all with the best content in light of what's going on. So anyway, thanks a lot and uh, take care.